first ride of the new season. I did all the checks uh, yesterday and the day before. I'm going to take a quick ride during lunch uh, down on this gravel road that's a few miles from my house. Uh, I'm also going to try the GoPro and kind of like the, I guess the mode of vlogging setup, but uh, no guarantees on how that's going to work. I might just cut the audio if, it, uh, if it's not very good. So, all right, let's get going. All right, clap, clap, clap. Let's get going. Hopefully the audio is okay. Uh, this is a whole new setup for me, so if it doesn't come out great. I apologize, but um, I think I might just go over kind of uh, maybe the reasons why I went with this bike, why I bought this uh, the Yamaha uh, XC250, and then we'll just have a nice little ride during lunch, and I'll head back. Uh, this road should turn into gravel if I remember correctly. And less than a mile. We'll see. We're going on the outside of the Seattle uh, watershed, so a lot of this stuff is um, blocked off. As you can see, the fencer here on the left. Oh, there we go. Yeah, here it is. It's turning to grab a little bit. So this is a kind of cool road, but there's not a whole lot off it. You can't really hike or anything like that. Um, but it's a nice place to kind of like test the bike after spring, which has been locked up all all winter. So, all right, so I, I guess I'll kind of go into like uh, the top reasons why I went to Yamaha. So, uh, my first bike was a Yamaha R6. Uh, it was a street bike uh, and it worked great while I was in college. And, um, it, you know, I'm, I'm not sure if it was the best first bike. It was kind of fast uh, for a, a new rider, but it served me well. And then, uh, I used that to go to college and um, that was my only vehicle for a while. So I used that to commute into Los Angeles and downtown. And um, it kind of sucked in traffic, but in California you can lane split. So that was nice. Um, before I moved to, when I got the job offer to move up here to Seattle, I ended up uh, selling the bike because I didn't want to move it up here with me. And I just didn't figure a street bike would be the best uh, thing to have up here given the weather. Um, so I sold that. Uh, I didn't have a bike for a couple of years. And then eventually I ended up with the Ducati Scrambler. Um, I ended up going with that because I wanted something that was a little bit, uh, I guess, uh, I don't know how I put it, but more uh, not road oriented. So more, uh, I guess it's, I wouldn't call it a Scrambler a dirt oriented bike, but um, it definitely is better on rougher roads and things like that. And, I, and my, my logic was being that it's kind of rainy here and the weather sucks. So I could be nicer to have something with uh, like grippier tires and better in mud and like light gravel. Uh, so I kept that bike uh, for about two years and I honestly didn't ride it very much. Um, it, it was a good bike, but I, I just, it just didn't do it for me. So um, I knew get rid of that when I moved because I didn't really have a parking spot for it. So, uh, and then I didn't have a bike for a few years and I started watching like uh, YouTube videos and I saw a lot of like, um, videos of people riding their, uh, I guess, dual sports, and that kind of introduced me to the subject. And I really like uh, just exploring, so uh, it fit into that kind of, uh, that need for me. Like it's something I can go on these forest roads and explore and uh, get around a lot faster than just hiking. So I bought the uh, XT250. Um, originally I went to go buy a um, uh, TW200 because I, I seen so many videos of, um, people riding those and it looks like such a fun like little bike uh, there's like, especially like uh, t-dubs kid on uh, youtube and then also um uh, i don't remember the channel name it's like a canadian uh, guy i think it was fortnite i'll include the links to both these videos or both these channels uh but fortnite did a video on the t90 or the tw200 and it was just like uh they really kind of romanticized the whole idea of having like a simple bike and something that you can get on and explore on and it's not super aggressive and you can push it to the limit and you're not gonna um you're not gonna really kill yourself and it's also really easy to ride on the on these roads like this so 
I actually went to the dealership to buy a TW200, and then, uh, but I had this one as a, a backup because I this I had my on the XT250 as well. But um, so I went there. I went to try it out, and it was just like it was like riding a tractor or something. It was so so slow, and it was geared so low on the TW200. And uh, I'm like, wow, this is like uh, coming from a street bike, mostly street bikes. Um, it was a huge change, and it honestly wasn't super enjoyable to ride. Um, so I tried out this, and this is also not super, like it's not a street bike or anything like that, but it was a lot more um, enjoyable for me to ride than uh, a TW200. So I ended up getting this. Um, I wanted something kind of cheap, and also I wanted something that was fairly common, so like, I wanted parts to be widely available. Uh, uh, Yamahas are, I have a soft spot Yamaha since my first bike was a Yamaha, but Yamahas, Honda, Suzuki's, like those uh, main Japanese brands are super uh, uh, ubiquitous, I guess, and the parts are everywhere, so like you're not going to really have a part, problem finding uh, replacement parts and things like that. And um, I wanted something I could wrench on and I can drop and I wouldn't feel too bad about beating up and uh, I wouldn't have to like rely on uh, dealerships and especially with like the Ducati finding parts for that and service and stuff is super expensive so um especially with the pandemic like it's kind of made me realize more that how easily like uh, supply chains can be uh just completely screwed up and um this is so nice and, um, and yeah so like or even like the suez canal thing with the ship that's stuck right now uh one uh shipping <laughs> incident can like delay your parts if you have like a very um kind of not a super common bike so like um and with the pandemic like parts like, there's a couple parts for my um ranger that need to be replaced and that took months to get them just because like how screwed up everything is um so yeah like especially like the honda generator i went with and like i'm, I'm trying to pick things that are more um i i take uh parts availability into consideration a lot more now when i'm selecting something just because uh those things kind of stuck with me. So those are the main reasons. Uh, something simple at Grunch on, it was uh, easy to ride. Uh, it gave me a way to explore and uh, and I could just beat it up. It's like, I, I've dropped this several times and it's just fine. Uh, my uh, clutch is a little looser than I would like, but um, really that, that's the, the worst of it. And I've dropped, I don't even know how many times I've dropped this, probably like, um, I've probably dropped it close to 10 times on the trail and things like that. And still, it is. Here it is. It looks pretty good still. Um, so, yeah, that's why I went for the XC250 for myself. Um, I do really like the, uh, I think it's uh, the T900, the new um, Yamaha uh, kind of like uh, adventure bike. Uh, but I don't I, I don't think I'm going to be moving up in bikes for a while. Uh, I will say that some things that kind of suck about this is it really sucks on the highway. It's not super enjoyable on the road. Um, I try to avoid going over 60. I, it goes up to 70. I've ridden it like uh, at 70 for like an hour at a time on the highway. And it's, um, I mean, it's doable. It's just, it's not enjoyable. I'm, I kind of feel beat up after that when I go home. Um, but, uh, oh, there's still snow out here. But, yeah, this is a this is a great day. Um, but yeah, anyways, if you have to ride really far on the road or you plan on doing like most of your riding on the freeway or streets, uh, I, I wouldn't recommend this bike. Uh, there's better bikes for that. Um, I wouldn't say this is like an adventure bike that you would take on like uh, cross country trips or anything like that. Um, yeah, I, I motorcycling is kind of like a, a romance, something I kind of romanticize a lot to myself and sometimes it doesn't really live up to that and sometimes it does um if you ever read the book um the art is end of motorcycle maintenance i mean, kind of get the idea of how like, uh, people can really write um really interesting stories about just like riding motorcycles and being one with your machine which isn't a thing really much anymore um especially as things like there's so many computers and different uh, things involved now with most um, kind of vehicles. So this is just something where you kind of, you feel like you're one with it. It's, you make a mistake, the bike responds and uh, it doesn't really protect you from it. 
like I used to uh, ride, drive only manual transmission cars and uh, I, I really miss that kind of connection you have. Turn around beyond this point. Maybe no turn around. I'm turning around right now. Uh, I'm just kidding. But, uh, it's kind of weird how you ride this gravel road and then randomly a little residential area pops up. Okay, that's a private road. Uh, I'm going to keep going. I feel like I remember driving this further last time. They lie. There is turn. There are turnarounds. Um, yeah. So maybe I'll just um, put some audio on and let you guys uh, just ride along with me for a couple of minutes. We're about to turn around in a bit and head back to the to work. I do have a job. So, um, yeah, I'm just gonna just come along with me and I'll be back. Uh, in the next week or so with some more Ranger videos and uh, hopefully more Yamaha videos and now this has uh, been broken out and it's ready for the season. Thanks for watching and uh, see you later.